Welcome to Rack of the Week 159. Uh, I want to begin by saying uh, welcome to my newest patron supporters and YouTube supporters, uh, Kia, Cowboy Al, and Jan. Hi, Kia. How you doing? Um, <laughs> Uh, let's get right into this one. Uh, this is a rack from a recent run. I ran 86, and I put a poll up on YouTube and and uh, patron, what what rack do you want to see from this run? And rack number six, which is the last run rack of the run, is uh, won the poll. So that's what we're going to take a look at. So we're going to see how this straight pool run ends. Every single straight pool run ends. We just don't know how. We want to force the table to beat us. Uh, in this instance, uh, I didn't do this. I didn't do that. I made a mistake at the end. There are so many pitfalls in straight pool. It's amazing we can get through two racks, let alone a 100-ball run and these, these uh, long runs. But uh, that's the goal. That's the interesting thing about straight pool. And I, uh, this, the title of this one is uh, Nudge, Push, poke, jab, and a bunch of other synonyms for the same word. A couple of weeks ago, I made a video, uh, a Rack of the Week video called uh, Nudge, Nudge, and it was showing John Schmidt bumping balls. And so this is the same theme, and this is unique. This is what is unique about straight pool. There's no other game where you're almost constantly thinking about not where the balls are, but where I need them to be in order to complete the rack. And so you're nudging different balls while you're playing uh, in uh, position for other balls, insurance balls, et cetera. And so that's what goes on in this rack. That's kind of what I want to talk about. I'll, let's let's just go through it. I'm showing on screen the last two balls before the break shot from the previous rack. And it's really important. I've mentioned this in the past. So I've got a break ball here. And then this is going to be the key ball. Now, and I've mentioned this before, this is not an ideal key ball. Uh, well, that ball goes in the side. It should be a good key ball. Well, not really. You want your key ball to be over here or even close to the pocket above your break shot. Um, then you have a much larger margin of error when you're playing position to try and bounce off this rail or play a stop shot. The problem with a... Uh, the problem with a key ball that's over here is you've got to land on it just right. Um, straight into the side pocket is here. And so if you land straight, you look like a genius because you just roll forward and then you're on your break shot. But if you're a little bit below the shot line, then your key ball, key ball ends up a long distance away. And if you're a little bit above the shot line, now you've got to uh, follow the cue ball to the rail and use a ton of left English to try and spin it back out here. And that's what happens to me. And and so you look at the, the layout here, it looks really ideal, doesn't it? You've got your triangle, if you're into the triangle thing. Um, the uh, I always say you want to look diagonally from your uh, key ball and pocket for your K2, and there it is. So this looks ideal, doesn't it? Well, the problem is I'm cutting my K2 ball to the right a little bit. So my cue ball is going to naturally slide this way. So I can't hold it for straight in on the side pocket, and that's the, the danger with these cue balls that are over here rather than over here. Um, above the break shot. That's the danger. So you've got to be really careful. Had I played my the ball before the K2 ball a little better, I, the cue ball, my cue ball would be here. Um, if I had played the speed better, my cue ball would be here, and I could play a stop shot or just drift two inches. Or if my cue ball is a little bit farther, then it's much easier to go to the rail, follow to the rail, and come out and get that straight-in shot that we need. I've got the wrong angle on this ball. And for that reason, I've got to follow to the bottom rail and up. And boy, you, you better get your speed just right or you're going to be in trouble. And as you can see, I came too far. So I'm cutting this ball to the left. I've got to go to the rail and spin it out. And it's because of that that I don't get an ideal angle on the break shot. Look how far down. Yeah, look how far down. Let me let the cue ball stop moving right there. Yeah. Let's, let's get me out of the way. My cue ball actually hit the rail here, and I had so much left English to try and spin it back up here, and it came in this direction. So whenever, you're, whenever your uh, cue ball is close to the object ball, you have a smaller window uh, 
to get to get naive, an ideal angle, and I came too far. So I have a shallow angle on your brake shot, and I've talked about this in the past. What what ends runs more easily than anything else? It's getting a shallow angle on your brake shot because you can't open the balls. You know, you end up with no shot or no ability to to rebrake. So I'm in a tough spot here. Um, I've I'm stretched out over the table because my cue ball is too close to the object ball. The point is. Uh, uh, straight pool players often complain, and I've complained a million times. Oh, I couldn't get the rack open. Well, why couldn't you get the rack open? Well, I had a shallow angle on my brake shot. Well, why did you have a shallow angle on your brake shot? Well, I had to follow to the rail and spin up on my key ball. Oh, why did you have to do that? It's because I got the wrong angle on the K2 ball. Oh, now we've finally gotten to the source of the problem. The wrong angle on the key ball on the K2 ball in the previous rack. Just illustrating how critical it is to take extra time on the last few balls in your end pattern to make sure you get it right. Why is it important? So you get the right angle on your break shot and you can open the balls well. You know, uh, when you become a competent straight pool player, if the balls open well, you got 14 points. That's how important it is. Okay, so I have a shallow angle, and I'm, I'm struggling. I'm, it's going to be a struggle to get these balls open. I, what I want to do is I'm going to use a, a somewhat forceful follow stroke with left English because my cue ball is going to hit the corner of the rack, and I want it to jump to the, to the bottom rail so I don't scratch, and then a little bit of left English because I want to just come back out center table. I'm not expecting to open the rack wide here uh, because of the shallow angle. It's just, just going to be a thin hit. Let's take a look at the result. So look at how that left English um, brings the cue ball up to center table. That's what you want to accomplish. Now, sometimes, yeah, you, you know, I'll talk about what I just did there. Some, sometimes if you hit it softer, the cue ball just goes to the bottom rail and bounces up, and you might have a shot on a ball like this nine ball back here, but you can't count on it. The best place for your cue ball is right where mine went, center table. Obviously, I have a shot on the three, but it's going to be hard to get anywhere or, or come straight across and, and open these balls. But this is why runs end. Shallow angle on the break shot. You can't get the balls open. Look at that massive cluster in the center of the table. And now that now that the balls are all disturbed, there's all kinds of little gaps in the balls. It's going to be even harder to get them open uh, should I find a rebreak shot. So what was I looking? I kind of leaned over the rack and kind of did a peace sign. I was just putting my, my fingers approximately the width of an object ball because I wanted to see, is there room for the cue ball right there to pocket this one. I wanted to make sure I could cut it. And it looks like there is, just barely. You've got, when you have a shot like this, you've got to commit to it and, and just ignore this stripe. You, you might be worried that this stripe is in the way of cutting that ball in. Well, it either, either it is or it isn't. But if this is the shot I want to shoot because I can re-break the rack. So you've got to just commit to the shot. If you watch it in slow motion, I'll bet I probably did hit this 13 first, but I, I don't care. I, I, I've looked at it. I believe I have just barely enough room. So you just cut the ball in the pocket. Ball. Ignore the rest of the rack. Just do your best to make that ball and commit to that aim point. I bet I hit the 13 first, but this is a draw stroke. Try to draw the cue ball out of there. Not too too strong, but... Just like that. Well, I think I didn't have a lot of draw on that, but I was I was queuing low on the ball to keep it from uh, from going forward and, and scratching, obviously. So, what a spectacular result! I mean, you've got to be happy with this, uh, even though uh, uh, there's still a lot of work to do. The point is uh, that rebreak shot. I was fortunate to get it, and uh, this is a great result, even though. Uh, because I had a shallow angle on the break shot, look at this. Almost every ball, except for two, almost every ball is on one eighth of the table, just this side below the second diamond. That's not what you want. <laughs> Generally, you want the balls a little bit more evenly distributed under the rest of these, the uh, you know, the rest of the bottom of the table. But that's what happens when you have a shallow angle break shot. But I'm in a good spot. Because these balls are relatively open. I don't have a break shot yet. 
Nothing, nothing on the side of the rack. Very easy shot on the two ball to start. Why don't I shoot the three, the nine, uh, or this eleven for for that for that matter, uh, or eleven or thirteen? I don't know whichever whichever this ball is. Uh, the reason is it's harder to control. We don't want to be shooting wild shots. I don't know. You need to be slamming into these balls. The title of this this video this week is nudge, poke, prod, <laughs> jab. Just. You, you just want to uh, you want to move these balls to your advantage. You just need to nudge them a little bit. There's no clusters that need, need to be slammed open. I need to remove the ten ball as well. That you you know the ten ball we is we kind of identify it as a, a problem ball and that it's a blocker ball. Once the ten's gone, only then does the three go. Possibly the three's a blocker ball. Only, 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 only after the three is gone will the six go. So there's a little bit of work to be done there. But I want to find an angle to kind of nudge these balls here just a little bit and make a uh, make a break ball. And to that end, I don't want to shoot the nine because the nine. Well, I suppose you could shoot the nine and play position to to shoot the two and nudge these. There's multiple ways to do it. But what I noticed is that I'm almost straight on the two, and if I roll forward. Then I'll have an angle on this, uh, I believe that's a five on the bottom rail, and then I can go up into these, and I'll have a shot on the nine back this way, or possibly a shot on the, the ten or something else. So I'm, I'm thinking that's the safest way to proceed here. So the very first shot after re-breaking re the balls is I'm planning on nudging the, the uh, balls in the center of the table to try and make a break ball, and improve the lie of the balls. So I want to run into this 13 full, see what happens. See how soft I hit it? Just nudge the balls. And that helped a lot. That helped a whole lot. Because now, and so first of all, what I did was preserve a shot on the 9, my insurance ball. The 7 ball can now be a break shot. Um, these are a little bit wider open. Now I have a shot on this ball. Uh, or I, uh, this ball is open to either corner pocket. And this stripe right here is open to this pocket. And indeed, that's the shot I want to play for because if you can get a shot on this 12 ball, you're going to have your cue ball over here somewhere. Now you can just tap, tap, nudge, poke these balls a little bit, and you have a shot on this ball this way. I mean, this is kind of straight pool 101, but it's also kind of very advanced. Um, a lot of players from this position are going to want to shoot this nine ball and bring the cue ball over this way and deal with these. I think that's a mistake. You, you, you don't have, you've got a, a bigger problem here in the center of the table and you really need to be able to develop an end pattern where you can get on your break shot. And so this inside spin, I'm, I'm driving the cue ball to the rail and I'm spinning spinning it a lot of left spin and then that's going to bring it up and I'll, I'm most likely going to stay below the shot line to this 12 ball. That's a very uh, straight pool players spin the ball around either side of the rack more than any other game. So you really got to be comfortable with that. If I don't hit it hard enough, I'll, uh, if I don't get a, a comfortable angle on this 12, let's say I land short and I've got a shot here and maybe I'll shoot that and nudge into these balls. So, so you've, um, this is the type of shot that straight pool players shoot more than any other uh, players in any other game. That little, just that little soft forward spin, and I, I ended up with a really perfect angle. So now I I decide you could do this a couple of different ways. I'm trying to stop before I shoot. Oh yeah, good, I got it. <laughs> so you can shoot a stop shot where or, or below center where the cue ball just runs into the four. The four is going to carry them off the 15 up table, and then the 15 is going to go this way a little bit. You want to hit it soft enough where the 15 just comes like over here. You don't want it going all the rail and creating more problems. But that's a stop shot, so you're guaranteed to have a shot on this, this stripe here back down to the right. So that's one way to do it. I'm looking at it, and I, I don't, I, I think you, I'm, I want to make another break ball. I think I can follow forward because the four ball is going to, the cue ball is going to skim off the four go forward and hit this stripe and knock it this way. So I think I might end up just nudging these two and having two break balls to work, possible break balls to work with instead of one. Oh, that actually, actually, I decided not to do that. I thought I did. Okay. 
I did the first option. I'm sorry about that. I thought I did the second one. So this is okay. I still have a shot on the seven ball uh, as a break ball. So I'm planning on that. But this ball is trapped. You've got to shoot this ball next because this ball, you don't want, you don't want, we're, we're, we're might, we might try and be done, done, done nudging now because this ball goes in this pocket. So I just need to get the cue ball over here. And in fact, once this stripe is gone, then I call these a shooting gallery. All of them go over here in this pocket. So now this becomes the key zone of the table. And I want to get my cue ball over there to be able to make things happen. And you could even make a case for, I talked last week about getting your cue ball in the circle. These balls go over here. These balls go over there. You kind of have a circle of balls. You want to get your cue ball in the circle. See that? I don't, oh yeah. And so I end up shooting this, uh, this stripe ball with a bridge because I'm trying to get my cue ball exactly there. What I, want, what I want to do is bring the cue ball down here and then up here where I can have a shot on this stripe. I know I'm likely to have a shot on this combination, 310, or maybe one of these balls this way. So I'm going to have something to work with, but I'm trying to get the cue ball over there, and I fail. So that's terrible <laughs> because that seven ball was in a really good position for break ball. It still can be a break ball. It's pretty high, but it can still work. Or maybe I can nudge one of these balls over and make a break ball. And I'm going to stand in the way, so I'll probably uh, skip ahead. So I, I've, I've just come back to this point in the video where I'm, I'm shooting this 12 ball. Now, why would I, or is that the 14? Yeah, the 14 ball. Why would I shoot the 14 ball from here? I've got three shot options. I thought about shooting the six in the side. That's so missable. I mean, I'm going to have a shot on the 310 combination afterwards, so it's very tempting, but it's too missable. I want to keep this run going. My other option uh, is to cut the 10 ball in, and I know a lot of you are looking at that. I like the, the option of cutting the 10 ball in. Use left English to bring the cue ball back around center table, and I have a shot on this ball on the side or the seven. I might get a window on the six. I mean, then three. Things can happen from up there, so that's that's not a bad shot either. I choose not to shoot it because I'm elevated over the 11. If you're elevated over these balls and you're using a lot of inside English, it's hard to account for the masse effect from your elevated cue. If you you could pocket the 10, but if you hit the rail first, you've really got a high chance of scratching over here. So I I, I choose not to shoot that. Shoot that. I do have a win. A window to shoot this 14 in the corner and all I want to do is just pinch the cue ball probably over here because then I'll have a, com uh, a combination on a 310 and then I can get back over here and probably shoot this 11 back in this corner pocket so that's the thought process let's see how that works out yeah I know I know my table <laughs> I hit that soft enough that I could brush the rail and, and have it go in what I didn't want to have happen I'm trying to get my pen up here what I didn't want to have happen is the cue ball land on the rail because then I'm cutting the three ball way to the right in order to make this and then my cue ball is moving way over this way and I don't want that so if, for that reason I kind of Kind of played it with a soft draw to keep my cue ball off the rail. So now I'm just sliding over to the side because I know I'm going to have a shot on the six up here. And hopefully the three doesn't follow all the way to the bottom rail, uh, which it didn't. So a lot of people are going to be tempted to shoot this three ball right now. And that's uh, definitely the wrong shot because I need position on that shooting gallery that I never got from f several shots ago. So once again... Same thing, I hit brush the rail going in on purpose to keep my cue ball off the rail. So now I, I'm, I'm liking it considering where this rack started out. Now I've got a chance to nudge another ball with no risk. I've got to kind of draw the cue ball up a little bit. I want to hit the side of this 15. I don't think I can knock it straight that way, but I think I can run into the, the four and get the, the 15 to go this way. So I, you know, possibly have another option for a break ball and then of course i need to hit it soft enough or with enough control that my cue ball doesn't slide up here behind the seven i need the cue ball to stop here so i have a shot on this three as my insurance ball and it's it's the need to not get trapped behind that seven 
that makes makes me not quite hit that 15 well. Well, I think I just hit it a little bit too hard. If if the key, if the 15 had stopped here, it might have been a better break ball than the seven. As it is, I'm happy to be here. I'm looking at my options and how am I going to get on the break shot? Uh, the seven balls of break shot. The 15 could be a break shot too, but it's it's way too far out. So I'm really committing to the seven ball uh, as my break shot. And I don't have a key ball. I'm looking at it. What's my key ball? How am I going to do this? The first thing that I think about is I want to do this. I'm th the first thing I think about is the four ball on the side is a key ball. But that's the same thing we just talked about at the beginning of this rack. That's a terrible key ball. It would be only be good if it was over here. From here, I've got to land perfectly on it. And so I, I'm thinking, why don't I just shoot in the three and come over here? Well, if you land good enough on this stripe, and it, you can be straight or you can be over here and cut it and then go to the rail and down. That's okay. But again, you've got to land perfect on that. So I've talked about this before. A ball in the center of the table can be, can be a good key ball. You use it as a pivot ball. What does that mean? That means if you get an angle on this side of the table, you can go two rails and get on your break shot. If you get this angle, you can follow to this rail and over to get on your seven ball break shot. If you get this angle, you can follow forward and straight up. If you're more shallow, you can follow two rails around. And if and the best case scenario, in my opinion, is to get this angle on the four ball, and then you just pivot. You just go to the rail and out. That's the best key ball. So it took me a while studying and looking at this to realize that. And then you realize you want to get here. You can use this stripe. So then I thought, okay, let's just come over here, get close to straight in. I can follow to the rail and up. That's not great because look at this speed control you've got to get. You've got to land just right. And I thought, okay, well, let's get the cue ball to go to the rail and then off. Then I'll be sure to hit it hard enough to get good on this ball. So after looking at it a while, I realized, no, neither of those are the best option. Use it, using the four as a pivot ball is the best option. But I had to study this for a little while to realize the best, the biggest positional window for, to get the shot that I want on the four is to shoot this stripe in this pocket. And so I need to go to the rail and come past the seven and come up here. That's how you're gonna get on your K2 ball. So it took me a little while to figure that out, but I'm coming, I'm, I'm seeing these options more often as I'm playing a lot more straight pool. So this is perfect because now um, I'm, I'm a, longer, a longer distance away from the object ball, which means the angle, the, the precise angle that I get is less impactful. Any of these angles are going to work, any of them. So I have a larger position zone. And all I need to do now is bounce the rail out, uh, bounce off the rail and come out. Here's the shot line for the four. I just need to stay below the shot line, and I'm going to have a really good uh, key ball. And so the K2 uh, ball is what made me have a difficult break shot going into this rack, and this K2 shot is what made it difficult <laughs> and in fact, what made this rack come to an end because I'm dead straight. It may not look like it, but, on the, but I'm dead straight. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I hit it too hard. And this is coming from a guy who's about to make a video called Speed Control. <laughs> so maybe I'll use this as an example of what not to do and what, and what happened. I, I didn't land below. I'm dead straight. Now, if I was a little bit, I mean, I mean just a hair if I had come a hair farther, I would have been able to follow to the bottom rail and two rails around. But I don't have that angle. And I'm studying this for a long time because, gosh, I want to continue this rack. Now, what did I, what did I just look at there? <clears throat> I pointed my cue stick over here because I, I was thinking, what if, do I have a way to shoot the seven ball in this side pocket? Can I get the cue ball here? and then break the rack like that. I'm thinking I might just barely have enough angle to cheat the pocket. I'm going to hit pause. I might barely have enough angle to cheat the pocket and at least get the cue ball up oh, up this far because there's no way I can get it all the way up, up above here and then have this angle. I don't have the angle to do that. So now I look like, okay, what if I play a stop shot or uh, just draw it back a little bit? 
from here, you, you've got to force follow the cue ball to the rail and spin it down into the rack. Another low percentage break shot, but I'm trying to find some option to keep this run going. I'm on six racks and, oh man, I'm just, it's kind of frustrating because if, if my cue ball had stopped here, oh, it would have been so simple to just follow to the rail. Oh man, you can't think that way. You got to think about possibility. So I keep looking, I'm looking and looking. What can I do? I'm, I'm looking also at shooting the seven ball right now. And, and can I f follow forward and come back over here and cut the set, the four in the side and come two rails around? I look about, about okay, I've got a lot of angle on the seven. Can I tap the seven in and just kind of come straight back across and then shoot the four in this side and stun down or come two rails around? And I finally went and take, took a look, and I don't know if you noticed what I saw. I, I saw the shot line for the seven in the upper corner. I have just the right angle that I can just barely follow forward and get past the seven, and I want to come past the shot line to the upper corner pocket right here because then I can shoot it in the upper corner and stun the cue ball into the rack. This is a terrible break shot but it's the best option that I can see to come up with. Uh, extremely low percentage. You also are, are not going to open up the rack wide on this shot. I like this shot for one reason, and that's years ago, Steve Miserak and Steve Davis, the snooker player, played straight pool. And I don't remember the conditions of, of the match, but during during that uh, match, they were it was a challenge match where they both played snooker and straight pool. And of course, snooker is Steve Davis's game. Straight pool is Steve Miserak's game. And um, they, the commentators were talking about how Steve Davis doesn't know the game of straight pool, but he shoots so straight, blah, blah, blah. And one rack, Steve Davis set himself up. He actually had an opportunity to set himself up for a traditional break shot. He, Steve Davis had a very similar shot, and, and it was shooting a, a object ball into the upper right corner pocket and into the rack. And he opened the balls up pretty well. And I was thinking about that shot when, uh, when I was setting up to shoot this seven ball. I was like, I'm going to shoot this like Steve Davis, Shawaka, and open up the rack. Make it 20. That's a good shot. Taking my time, come back. You can't see me off screen. I'm, I'm sighting, sighting this. I'm real close to straight in. This is the best angle I could get. So I'm going to make this ball. If nothing else, I'm going to pocket this ball. And so take a real good, real good, uh, real good pre shot routine and took my time on that shot. This is the best you could hope for. Got a couple of balls well, loose. I don't have a good shot. You know what? If, if the cue ball had not quite gone as far, if it was, say, here, I definitely would, would have cut this ball in the corner and, and gone uh, off the bottom rail hard up into the bottom of those balls. Maybe I would have had a chance there. Uh, where I'm at, yeah, it's, too, it's too thin. It's makeable, but, boy, it's a real low percentage. Um, I only had, my only shot is this bank shot. I've got a, a, if a, a straight in medium speed, is going to send this 14 ball to here, okay? So I've got to cut it a little bit. I've got to pinch it, and I'm actually going to use inside spin because I'm thinking, uh, yeah, I just called the bank shot. Uh, th I mean, this is a very, very makeable bank shot, but Cross it's harder because I've got to use left English. So I'm cutting the 14 just a bit to the right and left spin. I want to draw the cue ball back and below so I have a shot on this 13. And as you can see, I just didn't quite get enough spin on it. I made, I made the shot. Yeah, see, I wanted my cue ball down there. <laughs> Even if I get the cue okay, ball down 13, here, 13 in the uh, I'm going to have a tough road opening this rack. I, who knows what I might have come up with? I don't know. So uh, uh, the, the only shot I have here, and it's actually not that bad if I can make it, is to kick this 13 in. If I kick it in, the cue ball might be over here, and I'll have a shot on that nine ball. And uh, give it a good effort, but it just... Didn't quite, didn't quite catch enough of that thirteen. Oh, yeah, Ooh. just a little bit. If oh. I made that, I'd have a shot on this like, nine, and I could open the rack. So anyway, um, that's pretty much just kind of my thought process walking through that rack. There's no specific lesson there, other than 
I think I did a pretty good job of nudge, poke, prod, <laughs> just nudging those balls, massaging them in, into better position. Uh, the mistake was um, when I was shooting with the bridge and I knocked the seven ball out of, out of position. If I had gotten around that seven, I think the, the rest of the rack would, would have gone much easier and I might have had a very good angle and a traditional uh, break shot on that seven ball. Uh, attention to detail. There's no other game that forces you to pay attention to these small, this this much detail in these small positional routes and getting that cue ball just right. It's a maddening game. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got something out of it. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you're going to play pool, play it straight. See you next week on Rack of the Week. Bye.